West Morning Sprint is brought to you by Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. All right, it is just about 6.53. Time to get you ready to take on your Tuesday here in the morning sprint. Destiny Richards has details on a pair of Senate runoff elections happening in Georgia today. And Robin Nance anchoring from home this morning with a new COVID testing site opening today. But first, to Mark Peterson with a look at that forecast. All right, good morning, everybody. In our first alert weather, the increased clouds are four things you need to know today. There's some black ice out there, and those walkways are slippery. Take advice and slow down. Take it easy. Rain or snow moving in tonight. You South Hill and in the five mile, you could see an inch of snow tonight and then turning to rain for Wednesday. And as we look at that 48 hour forecast, yeah, we're going to variable clouds today, but boom, it moves in, and that's going to be again. And around the 9, 10 o'clock hour tonight, and hanging with us all the way through Wednesday. We expect to learn the next steps for reopening Washington this afternoon. Last week, Governor Jay Inslee announced a one week extension of the statewide COVID 19 restrictions. Those rules are now set to expire January 11th. Inslee promised to release an updated reopening plan this week. He is now scheduled to speak at 2.30 this afternoon. You can be the first to know what's next by downloading the free 4 News Now app and turning on push notifications. Also happening today, Providence will open a drive through COVID-19 testing site in Spokane Valley. The new site will be able to test asymptomatic patients who are two years old and up, as well as asymptom rather symptomatic patients over the age of 12. The site will be in the parking lot of Providence Medical Park. You'll be able to get tested without leaving your car. If you are positive, you will get results within two days through a phone call. We have all the information you need to know about the new site on KXLY.com. A majority of students in Spokane County still not in classrooms. That will stay the same, at least for now. A week before winter break, Governor Jay Inslee recommended districts bring back students in kindergarten through fifth grades. Spokane Public Schools is working on its plans right now. Those will be announced tomorrow. We'll have the latest updates posted first on KXLY.com. And it's election day in Georgia, where the two Senate runoff elections will determine control of the U.S. Senate. Polls show both races are neck and neck right now, so it's unlikely we'll know the results tonight. But today's vote will ultimately determine if Democrats can win these two runoff races, something they haven't done in nearly three decades. Peach State voters will decide whether Republicans David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler return to Washington or if Democratic challengers John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock take their place. A win by one of the Republicans would keep the Senate in the hands of Republicans and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Wins by both Ossoff and Warnock would result in a 50-50 split in the Senate, giving Democrats control of the chamber since Vice President Kamala Harris cast tie-breaking votes. Well, police in Washington, D.C. arrested the leader of the Proud Boys for destruction of property. Henry Tario is accused of burning a Black Lives Matter banner that was torn down from a historic black church last month. He's also facing weapons, a weapons charge due to two high-capacity firearm magazines officers found on him when he was arrested. Tario told the Washington Post he participated in the burning of the Black Lives Matter banner and said he would plead guilty to destruction of property and pay the church the cost of that banner. That arrest came as members of the National Guard were called up to monitor the streets of Washington, D.C. this week, preparing for two potentially violent pro-Trump demonstrations. Those protests are expected to involve conspiracy theorists, militia groups, and the Proud Boys. The police chief of D.C. says the National Guard will be used for crowd management and traffic control. The United Kingdom is facing a third national lockdown now, following a record surge in COVID-19 cases with more than 50,000 new infections close each day for nearly a week. The new lockdown will last at least three weeks. England is closing schools except to vulnerable children and children of frontline workers. People must stay in their homes but will be allowed to leave for limited reasons. And after surviving 2020, you can still make some healthy New Year's resolutions. Every year, people wonder if it's healthy to hold yourself to one, but it's just about how you treat yourself along the way. Nate Ainley, a therapist with Passages Family Support, says negative self-talk when you fall behind on your goals is what makes it unhealthy. He advises people to make realistic goals that aren't too lofty, and when you mess up or fall behind, just try again. And a lot of people are going into this new year with the same mental health issues they ended 2020 with. Ainley says those who have struggled with depression from loneliness and isolation or anxiety should try these practices and activities to manage their mental health. But just like with New Year's resolutions, take it one step at a time. 
An update now on an Amber Alert issued for a 15-year-old Yakima girl. That Amber Alert was issued yesterday morning but canceled late last night. Police did not provide details, only an update to say that she was found safe. We'll check weather with Mark again next.